Scythians were an Iron Age Iranic speaking group that inhabited Eastern Europe and Central Asia. In this video you will see the DNA results, so predicted appearance, traits, uh, GD match results of this Scythian individual who was uh, a female. The sample name is MJ46. Uh, this sample is actually a part of the reference population for Scythians on illustrative DNA. And uh, this is what she looked like according to my Nashakot tool as well as according to YSEC. Uh, YSEC, you, you can see depicted her with uh, sunglasses because it couldn't predict her eye color. Uh, because she wasn't genotyped for the major mutations in BH2 or BH3. However, my tool, uh, you know, it imputes the genotype. So my tool found her to have blue eyes with an amber center or hazel eyes, both at rough, roughly equal um, likelihood, uh, snub-shaped nose and blonde hair. Now, as you can see, I depicted her a little bit different from the way I depicted most uh, other West Eurasian people. On my on my channel, uh, that's because she had one derived allele in EDAR, so that's why I thought maybe I should make her a little bit more East Asian looking since she had this gene. She wasn't genotyped for the Pro 319 Pro variation DRD2, so you know this is, was a a pretty low quality file, so I had to really uh, either impute genotype for some of these variations or I had to just exclude them from the video. Uh, now this one she had a typ typical genotype for Europeans or everybody aside from East Asians, basically. And uh, this is what she had in the EDAR, which is, you know, why I depicted her looking a little bit East Asian. You know, I depicted her looking East Asian, like more high set eyebrows, arched eyebrows, more distance between eyebrows and the eyes. That's basically what uh, is implied by East Asian features. Um, but I don't know, actually, does this variation have much of an effect on these kinds of traits or is it only shovel shaped ancestors? Like, I don't know for sure. She did not have the European lactose persistence mutation. And uh, the file did not contain genotypes for the very the biggest variant in OXTR that has to do with sociopathic uh, tendencies. So, you know, but I had to include this in the video because, like, what kind of a video is it if I don't include the sociopath gene? And I found an another variation also within OXTR. And in this variation, she had TT, which is very typical for Asians, very atypical for Africans, very atypical for Europeans. So, you know, probably did have the sociopath gene, just based on the ethnicity distributions of the alleles. Uh, the file also did not contain any info on the Valmet uh, variation in Compt, also known as the Warrior uh, gene. Now, once again, I had to include this in the video, so I just I was just looking for alternative variations, alternative SNPs within this gene. Uh, alternative SNPs within Compt, and I found this variation. And the allele distribution basically mirrors the allele distribution in the main uh, Compt uh, variant for warrior gene. And here she had CC, which is most typical in East Asians, Africans, and least typical in Europeans. So from that, I basically inferred that she probably had the warrior gene with the IO uh, in the other variation in Compt, and probably had. Uh, basically, the implications of the warrior genotype is that she probably had uh, quicker reuptake of dopamine, less dopamine in the system, uh, better stress resiliency, however, less attention, less motivation. Moving on to GD match, this is her results of Eurogene's K13. By the way, I've made a video on a Scythian person previously, or I should say Scythian in quotes, because that person probably really was not a Scythian, was probably a Slav that was buried alongside Scythians. Uh, if you watch this video that I made, the previous video on Scythians that I made, also from Ukraine, also kind of from this location, that Scythian had only 4% West Asian. So it was probably a Slav, and it was actually closest to like Slovaks and Poles. It was probably a Slav. This right here is a real Scythian, 22% West Asian, on top of like 5% South Asian, some East Asian and Siberian as well. This is a very Scythian individual, definitely not a Slav. With the oracle for Eurogene's K13, she looks closest to Moldavians, Hungarians, Tatars, all at very high distance. Once again, this looks like a typical, like, actual Scythian result. And uh, it's getting modeled as a mixture of Swedish plus Tajik or Sweet Norwegian plus Tajik. Once again, this person was a Scythian and Iranic person, so she had some BMAC-related ancestry. Not just European, not just Sintashta, like a lot of people believe. A lot of people think that Scythians and Sarmatians are just like Sintashta, like, original proto indo aryans but no, they actually have a lot of BMAC ancestry as well. Every Iranic person in the world has some BMAC ancestry, guys, and Scythians, even from Ukraine, even Scythians from, like, southern Poland, if they existed there, are no exceptions. They have, if they are Scythians, if they have Iranic ancestry, they have BMAC ancestry. And it's getting modeled as a mixture of, like, very weird stuff here, uh, but I'm noticing 59% Scottish plus 40% Turkmen, or 60% Scottish plus 40% Turkmen at the very end. 
and here is her result with pond dna lk12 now here how do you tell the difference between the caucasus hg ancestry in Sintashta uh, versus the caucasus hg ancestry in bmac and to tell the difference you have to look at south asian she's scoring 3.8 percent south asian so I'm guessing that if I were to run a BMAX sample through this calculator, it would score half South Asian plus half Caucasus HG. I'm just guessing. I don't know for sure. Uh, I never. I don't think if I have run a BMAX sample through this calculator, actually. Uh, but so all in all, in total, she should have around 8% BMAX related ancestry. And with the Oracle, she's closest to Nagai's Tajiks from, not Tajiks, but Pamiri people. And she can be modeled as a mixture of like Chuvash plus Iranian or... Uh, Mardvin plus Uzbek or Uzbek plus Estonian. So it's just kind of a mixture of, you know, Uzbek, Uzbek and Iranian. These people have like BMAC or BMAC related ancestry, right? So this person had a lot of Southern, uh, Southern ancestry. So when people say that these Scythians or these Sarmatians were just like average typical Northern Europeans, that's obviously not the case. This is what she scores with the Pond DNA LK10 Ancient Calculator here. Notice that she's getting 5% ASI. Uh, I think the ASI here does not represent South Indians in like the Bronze Age. I think it represents a more ancient group and it's probably ancestral to BMAC. I'm not sure what BMAC would score on this calculator. Probably would score CHG plus ASI. That's what I'm thinking. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of Finnish plus Iranian or like Russian plus Turkish or like Russian plus Kurdish. So clearly a lot of southern related ancestry that's much more than typical uh, for northern europeans today this is what she scores with the ancient eurasia k6 calculator by gidrosia um, she's scoring 30 percent natufian which is about as much as i get i don't know i think i score 30 maybe a little bit more than 30 but it's about as much as i get and she's scoring 15 percent east asian which is also very very interesting uh, this person is more east asian and more i don't want to say southern but more caucasus has a more Caucasus uh, shift than the typical for uh, modern Central or Northern Europeans. This is what she scores with Gidrosia K3. Now you can see there is a little bit of this uh, East Asian uh, genetics in her. It's one-fifth of East Asian, one-fifth of uh, Mongoloid kind of genetics, which is probably why this is the reason she actually had uh, one derived uh, allele in EDEAR. And this is what she scores with Eurogenes K36. Now, this is a very extremely diverse result, but let's talk about it for a little bit. The biggest category here is North, Ca North Caucasus, which is also very atypical for modern, like, Central and Eastern Europeans. For example, I score 5% of this category, and that's actually, like, a lot. That's This actually is an extremely high amount for a Russian to score that. But this person scored 15.8, which is insanely high. Uh, she's scoring a lot of North Sea, so a lot of, like basically Western European uh, related uh, drift rather than Eastern European. That's what I'm noticing. She's scoring French too and Iberian. Uh, once again, very Western European components to score. And here is what she scores with the Eurogenes K10 on Admixture Studio. What's interesting is it's modeling her as a mixture of Swedish plus Nagai or like Icelandic plus Kumik, which is a very... Uh, very cool and it's closest to Turkish from Diliarman followed by Moldova and if you have a uh, good memory you should remember the Turkish Diliarman and Moldova here uh, because I'm, this is going to be relevant later and here is the result uh, with the official G25 for this sample from Explorer DNA by the way remember I told you to remember Turkish Diliarman it's right here it's right here it's the second closest population I'm not sure what's the difference between Turkish from... Dilarman is Bulgaria, I think, right? So what's the difference between Tur Turkish from Bulgaria versus Bulgarian from Bulgaria? I'm not sure what the difference there is, but it's much closer to the sample than Bulgarians. As you can see, Bulgarians don't show up here. And as I've said earlier, this sample is one of the references for the Scythian group on illustrative DNA. Um, I circled it so that you can, you know, see it clearly. Uh, it's scoring on illustrative DNA. It would it would be scoring 38.8% European hunter gatherer, and 12.2 Caucasus, 7.4% Zagrosian. So Zagrosian would be like BMAC. Uh, I think BMAC would score mostly Zagrosian here. So um, yeah, this person was not a like Northern European. Was this person was not just a Sintashta. This person had some BMAC as well. Thank you guys for having watched the video until the end. Uh, you can actually download this sample in 23 andme format from link, which is going to be in the description. Uh, if you think I said something stupid or like made a big blunder in the video, I said something that just doesn't make any sense, uh, correct me in the comments. And, you know, of course, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.